Hey gang, it's JC, and this is the Daily Dose for Tuesday, November 8th, 2011. We're back after a one-week layoff. Uh, we're here every day at jconthelion.com with the Daily Dose, and we have great television archives at the top of the page, and then we have our eye candy feature below and our rock and roll poll question in the corner, which today is, do you think justice was served in the trial of Dr. Conrad Murray, who was accused in the death of Michael Jackson? What a freak show that was yesterday. What are these thousands of people standing outside the courtroom like they have some sort of say in this and then they demonstrate after it's like you know the only lazier people I know than that are Cub fans because you know while everybody else is working like Lee Elia said back in April of 1983 they're out there sitting in the bleachers the ball game in the middle of the day while the rest of the world is at work I don't know what's going on anyhow yes no or got to put something in for the crazies I don't think Michael Jackson is really dead. Please answer in the corner. We'll have results for you tomorrow. All right, while we were away, 60 Minutes correspondent Andy Rini died Friday night at the age of 92, but if he's anything like Morley Safer, it's not going to stop him from still appearing on 60 Minutes. Ryan Seacrest is teaming up with Reese Witherspoon to produce a movie. I think it's called Legally Bored. A 5.6 magnitude earthquake rattled residents in Oklahoma at the tail end of last week. There was desolation and destruction as far as the eye could see, and then the earthquake hit. Uh, daylight savings kicked in over the weekend. That means the Kardashian girls got an extra hour of sleep being with pro athletes. Dr. Conrad Murray, back to that again. You thought it was done. Not a chance. Found guilty of involuntary manslaughter death of Michael Jackson. Jackson family says the verdict ends a sad chapter in their life. Then they looked at LaToya and said, okay, one of the sad chapters in our lives. Lindsay Lohan released from jail after serving just four hours and 40 minutes. She spent more time in jail than Kim Kardashian spent married. Uh, there's talk that Kate Middleton is pregnant. Bieber! Russian police found 29 mummified female bodies in a man's home. Last week, it's the largest collection of mummified women since Sex in the City 2. I, I saw that coming and I couldn't do anything about it. A uh, new poll shows that a majority of Republican voters, I'm still laughing about that. New poll shows that a majority of Republican voters aren't concerned about sexual harassment claims against Herman Cain. Mainly, they're just relieved that for once, a Republican is accused of sexual misdeeds with a woman. Uh, back to Dr. Conrad Murray. You thought it was done and I'm not. Um, David Spade gets the award for best tweet yesterday. He said, oh my God, Dr. Conrad Murray is convicted of man-ish slaughter. Yeah, I like that. Smoke and Joe Frazier, who actually sang the song Proud Mary at our old radio studios back in the old KSD Classic Rock 93.7 days back in the uh, late 1980s, passed away at the age of 67, short battle with liver cancer, smoking Joe Frazier. I think we'll probably dig out that highlight and play that because that was very, very cool. Joe Frazier sitting three feet from me singing Proud Mary. It was unbelievable. All right. Um, Bill O'Reilly's head is going to explode tonight on Fox News. That's because uh, two couples are going to have sex for the first time on the TV show Glee tonight on Fox, including one gay couple. Uh, you might want to put up plastic uh, inside the studio <laughs> of Fox News. So, you know, otherwise it's going to look like the back seat of uh, John Travolta and... and uh, <laughs> in Pulp Fiction, where they actually accidentally blow the kid's head off. Oh, man, I'm entertaining myself here today. Colbert Report tonight, by the way, has Seth Meyers from Saturday Night Live. Could be interesting. In his new book, Shaquille O'Neal says that he once threatened to kill Kobe Bryant after Kobe said in an interview that he thought Shaq was milking a toe injury. Michael Vick, bad day yesterday. He loses to the Bears on Monday Night Football. And reports now surface that some woman has a, uh, she's shopping around a nude, fully frontal photograph of Michael that was sent to her from his jail cell. How the hell has that happened? Guys in prison have better internet access than I do. Researcher designed an iPhone app that monitored 45,000 people's happiness for a year. And here's what they found. Having sex makes us happiest, followed by exercising and going to a concert. Being sick in bed depresses us the most, followed by waiting in line and taking care of an old person, 
The happiest moment of the year is at 1.50 p.m. on Christmas. The saddest moment of the year, January 31st at 8 p.m., right in the dead of winter when vacation days and the summer seem endlessly far away. Also, a new survey by an organization called Healthy Women found that women believe that having frequent sex is important to their overall health, but that it doesn't inspire them to actually have sex that often. More than half the women think they should be having sex a few times a week, but two in three have it once or less or fewer times a week. Uh, when they do, women are more likely to have sex out of obligation instead of for enjoyment. Okay, just one more thing for JC to be paranoid about. But women who have sex at least four times a week look up to 10 years younger than their actual age. My head is going to explode now. All right, top sign you're about to get dumped, according to researchers, is that your boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband starts losing weight. That's how you know you're going to get dumped, because people who know they want to get out of a bad relationship start getting in shape so they'll be as sexually attractive as possible when they're back out on the open market. In the meanwhile, more than two-thirds of people said that buying a house aged them two full years. A few people said it aged them up to four years. It also led to hair loss and a diminished sex drive for 19% of the respondents. Experts from the Kansas State Association of Fire Chiefs say you'll have about three minutes, probably at most, to get out of a burning building if you're in a house, if your house catches fire. New homes, less than that, because they're made from thinner wood, have a more open floor plan, and are more likely to have furniture with flammable foam cushions. One more thing to worry about. Birthdays today, Morley Safer is 80 years old, 12 Emmys on 60 Minutes, and the question is, is he next or is Mike Wallace next? I'm gonna go with Mike Wallace. 16 days till Thanksgiving, 47 days till Christmas, and my buddy Chris Albers, who I always talk about, who went to school at SLU High, got a job as a page at NBC, ended up working for David Letterman, then Bill Maher, then uh, John Stewart, then uh, some stuff on VH1, but for 16 years was Conan O'Brien's monologue writer, but when he worked for Letterman, created a character by the name of Dwight the Troubled Teen that uh, was a recurring character on the show. Well, Chris uh, split from Conan when Conan went west, Good move, Chris. See, the man's got, uh, got, got something upstairs. He knew that that ship was going to sink. And so he stayed back in New York, and he told me this morning that Letterman called him last night, wants him to be on the show tonight. So you may see our buddy Chris Albers from right here in St. Louis on David Letterman tonight. He, he wears these, <laughs> these little preppy outfits like red pants and a red plaid blazer. And he's got his friends like sitting around in the corner of Dave's set making too much noise. And then Dave interrupts the show and says, what's going on over there? And Chris has a tendency to play this character whose father is rich and bought the network. So... Letterman is forced to kiss up to this kid, played by Chris. It's very, very funny stuff, and uh, you might see Chris uh, tonight on Letterman. All right, JC's eye candy today. We shift gears because almost anybody can get everybody to say nice things about him after they die. But Bob Forsh was one of those guys who people, and I mean everybody, said nice things about Forshy while he was alive. Um, I remember my first Major League Baseball game in St. Louis, Back in June of 1984, Bob Forsh against Nolan Ryan, Cardinals against the Astros. I had the pleasure of getting to know Bob over the years and played in many charity softball games with him. You know, Bob and you know, Bob had two no-hitters with the Cardinals, and his brother, Ken Forsh, also a pitcher, he also had a no-hitter, making them the only brother team in the history of Major League Baseball, each to have a no-hitter at the Major League level. Uh, Bob threw out the first pitch before Game 7, of the World Series just, uh, you know, like uh, not even two weeks ago. And he was all smiles. I didn't get the chance to see him that night. And I, for selfish reasons, I feel better about that because as bad as I feel and as much as my heart is breaking for Bob and his family, um, it just would have been worse if I had seen him about 10 days ago right before the uh, seventh game of the World Series. Uh, we found three vintage pictures of Bob including him tearing his number 31 down off the wall in Bush Stadium when they were doing that countdown to the old Bush Stadium back in 2005. Also a vintage picture from him, I think it was late 1970s. He was just a kid out there pitching for the Cardinals. And then we found a group photograph of a Joe Buck celebrity softball game. I want to say it was in 2005 or 6 uh, out in Illinois and a lot of uh, media celebrities and former Cardinals that you would know and right over my left shoulder there's Bob Forsh, and it was a pleasure to know this guy, and it is an incredibly sad thing. This is happening way too often, where we're losing guys, you know, 50s and 60s. 
you know, it's one of those, uh, one of those days, just one of those bad, bad things. So, uh, but all we can do is something like this happens is have our memories of a guy who we really liked, and uh, find some old pictures and try to smile about uh, how Bob, people like him, make uh, the world sort of a more fun place to be in. He was a great guy. Gonna miss you, Fortune. All right. Do you think justice was served in the trial of? Dr. Conrad Murray in the Michael Jackson case yesterday. Yes, no, or I don't think Michael Jackson is really dead. He's got to put something in there for the moon landing deniers, you know, conspiracy theorists and stuff like that. Please answer in the corner. We'll have results for you tomorrow. Back from vacation today from noon to 3 with Trish Gazelle, Trish's Trash, on the Big 550 KTRS, on Facebook uh, at the Showgram with J.C. Corcoran, on Twitter at STLJC Corcoran, and, of course, right here at J.C. on the line. Com. That's it, JC's Daily Dose for Tuesday, November 8th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. And in the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. We're outside here today because it's like the last nice day. We've beaten this one to death. As I said, have a good one. See you later. Bye. <laughs>